Uh, good evening. This is a late lecture. Very late. It's nine o'clock. I can't imagine we used to have even later ones. I think there was ones that started at eleven o'clock. That's absolutely lunatics. But today I think we have a good reason. Uh, being tired after the festivities in New Year's Eve could be an excellent opportunity to dwell into something new. And this is Edward Witherspoon's chapter about logic and, and attunement, coming from Heidegger on logic. It's edit, edited by Dahlström himself and um, another fellow called Filippo Casati. And well, I will continue where I left off in 1320C, so this will be titled 1320D, as in David. How can any, how can an experience of any kind make it legitimate, legitimate to talk about the nothing? when doing so violates the principle of non-contradiction. Can an experience prove <clears throat> that the nothing both is and is not an empty? Entity. Ah, and is not an entity, or prove that the nothing can be a topic of assertions. For For Heidegger, the principle of non-contradiction belongs to a family of logic as formal systems that he regards as the traditional interpre interpretation of thinking. This is the logic whose sovereignty he seeks to overcome. In the postscript to what is metaphysics, Heidegger comments on this traditional logic as follows. Why does the lecture <clears throat> place this term in quotation marks? So as 
to indicate that logic is only one interpretation of the essence of thinking. Indeed, the one that at its very name shows rests upon the experience of being attained, attained in Greek thought. If the Greeks' experience of being can give us the logic as formal systems, formal system that has developed into what Heidegger decries as mere logistics. then perhaps Dasein's experience of the nothing can give us access to the possibility of thought. That can tolerate the peculiar descriptions of being and nothing that Heidegger forced himself into. As I read Heidegger, the experience of anxiety is supposed to provide that new way of thinking. It is a shift in Dasein's attunements so that what before was paradoxical becomes comprehensible. What before made no sense becomes sensical. Like the Wittgensteinian attunements that allows us to agree in our applications of rules and projections of words into new systems.
new contexts. These attunements lie at a different level from the rules of logical systems. They are not stances I can be argued into. I would say that is very important. You cannot be convinced to go there. It is how knowledge is constructed. Whether you understand it, you can go there. If you don't, you cannot. But you can never ever be argued, convinced, or I would say taught. But a special experience can impel me to adopt them. The idea that anxiety is akin to the Wittgensteinian notion of attunement. is suggested by Heidegger's terminology. Anxiety like related states such as profound boredom and joy at someone else's existence. is what he calls a gestimmt sein. Or a way of being in tune. Heidegger also refers to such states as Stimmungen or moods. These are etymologically connected to Stimme or voice. And the verb stimmen, which can mean to give voice to something or to tune a musical instrument. Cavell stresses exactly these etymological features when he chooses the term attunement for the concept he finds in Wittgenstein. This etymological commonality does not prove that anxiety is an attunement in precisely Cavell's sense.
but it does indicate that both concepts pertain to being in tune with something. Wittgenstein emphasizes being in harmony with other speakers. Heidegger emphasizes being in tune with the world, with entities as a whole. The power of an experience to shift the boundaries of inter intelligibility may be illustrated with two examples. One is the experience of coming to see a new aspect. So long as I see a duck rabbit drawing only as a duck The suggestion that it is a picture of a rabbit makes no sense to me. I cannot see how the words, it's a rabbit, could describe this image. The possibility that the drawing can be so described becomes intelligible when, through a switch in my visual experience, I see it as a rabbit. Perhaps anxiety is an analogous switch in my perception. Normally, <clears throat> my experience is of this determinate thing and that determinate thing.
in anxiety, entities do not change. But now I experience a new aspect. And listen now. Indeterminates. Indeterminateness. Subjective understanding of something not being determined as a knowing my comment. This experience is what Heidegger describes as anxiety making the nothing manifest. Because language imputes some level of determinateness to whatever we talk about. <clears throat> We end up saying things like the nothing is and is not. Our traditional logics as formal systems reject this talk as nonsensical. But perhaps Heidegger is suggesting that the novel perception produced by anxiety gives meaning to our attempts to describe the nothing. A second example of how an experience can alter one's attunements so that what seemed incoherent becomes meaningful and even true. Is religious religious conversion according to some accounts of it the claim that God is three persons in one or that Jesus' death atones for our sins is unintelligible to someone without Christianity's commitments. But a religious conversion can so alter the convert's 
understanding. that these theological doctrines become intelligible to them. The convert does not learn anything new, but everything appears transformed. Perhaps the clear night of the nothing similarly transforms someone who undergoes it so that the nothing and being become intelligible. Eight, eight, the locus of anxiety. The understanding acquired by the convert and the perception delivered by seeing a new aspect remain inaccessible to those untouched by the grace. and those to whom the aspect <clears throat> has not dawned. If the new attunements that come with anxiety work in a similar fashion, then those who have experienced anxiety will be able to philosophize about being in ways that will be unintelligible to those who have not The revision of the logic as formal systems that Heidegger calls for will be available only to those thinkers who have undergone this fundamental experience. And I will say this is very important to put to mind. Without you going through the experience and change at heart, the text will never ever be available to your understanding. It will actually do your no good.
this conclusion would mean that Heidegger is offering an esoteric philosophy. One whose insights are available only to the initiated. This would make his metaphysics a specialized discipline. which could be pursued only by those whose experience of anxiety has attuned them for it. The critics who think there is nothing to Heidegger's invocation of the nothing could be dismissed as unqualified because they are not appropriately attuned. However, this conception of Heidegger's philosophy is incompatible with the role he claims for metaphysics. In what is metaphysics, he says, that encountering the nothing is an essential occurrence in human existence. Scientific Dasein is possible only if in advance, it holds itself out. Into the nothing. Only because the nothing is manifest, can science make entities themselves objects of investigation. End of quote from Heidegger. Furthermore, not just science but any attitude toward entities depends on Dasein's relationship to the nothing. Human Dasein can comport itself toward entities only if it holds itself out into the nothing. And as we have seen, it is in anxiety that Dasein encounters the nothing.
with a fundamental attunement of anxiety we have arrived at that occurrence in Dasein in which the nothing is manifest. These statements entail that anxiety. The mood that makes the nothing manifest is, necessar is a necessary precondition for doing science and indeed for any compartment toward entities. Each of us comports ourselves toward entities. We use tools, we interact with other people, we engage in more or less theoretical reflections about entities. But have we all experienced anxiety? Have we all been held out into the nothing? Or is anxiety as the condition for the ability to comport oneself toward entities? a feature of Dasein, but not of each human being. How are we to understand the experience of anxiety if it really is the condition for human life as we know it. There are at least three routes Heidegger could take in answering this question. One way to understand the way anxiety makes possible our encounters with entities is to hold that undergoing anxiety is an experience only for a few intrepid individuals. They serve as pioneers, achieving an understanding that reveals entities.
then they open that understanding to the rest of us. This interpretation is suggested by Heidegger's description of the anxiety of those who are daring. Could you put a pause? Alternatively, we could think of anxiety as a cultural and historical phenomenon. Just as the Greeks achieved an experience of being that they expressed in Logos, so a new era can achieve an experience of the nothing that expresses itself in a new contra logical metaphysics on this view it is Dasein who is anxious And Dasein's anxiety is different from the anxiety of the individual human being. Yes, human beings. Finally, we can maintain that Anxiety is ubiquitous. Every human being has anxiety and so has encountered the nothing. And this is what enables each of us to relate to entities. I believe that the most illuminating of these three interpretations is the one that seems most implausible. namely the interpretation according to which every human being has experienced anxiety. It seems obviously false. Why, no doubt, all adults have been anxious, worried, fearful at some points in their lives. Has everyone tumbled into the abyss of indeterminateness that is experience that is the experience of anxiety Heidegger describes hmm.
many people will deny having undergone that form of anxiety. Are they wrong about what they have experienced? Heidegger would say that they are. Human beings have an invertebrate tendency to deny, repress and cover up essential features of our existence. An experience can shape us even when we repress the memory of it or even when we prevent it from coming to consciousness in the first place. So it is with our experience of the nothing. If anxiety runs through each of us, then each of us satisfy the necessary condition for encountering entities. And each of us is, in principle, capable of understanding Heidegger's metaphysics. But this does not entail that we actually are attuned to understand it. For it could be that we need to uncover anxiety. To experience it in a self-conscious, reflective manner in order to get what Heidegger is saying about the nothing. We cannot decide to understand. Yes. Quote from Heidegger. We are so finite that we cannot even bring ourselves originally before the nothing through our own decision and will. And this goes to show this is not something you can want or make yourself understand. It is not a reward to be taken and it will not come if you want it too much. But perhaps we can decide not to refuse to understand. 
I have argued that if Heidegger seeks a revision of the, the former rules of logic, the revision would have to come from so altering our attunements that we made new judgments of what makes sense, of what is possible. I suggest that what that we remain open to the possibility that Heidegger's philosophical investigation of being is tenable despite the contradiction it embodies. If we are to find the sense in this investigation, we will have to excavate, and this is important, excavate the anxiety that we generally, and for the most part, repress and cover up. And that was the last of Witherspoon. And I do agree with the last saying, it's very important. We can have an exact to the word understanding and we can repeat it by heart. But since, as he shows here, the upper part of language has an under part and that is achievement or anxiety. And if that is not in concord, even if we know each and every word, no understanding will be. And I also think that in modern times where we do not let, I would call it also the apeiron, the slowness, the nothingness to come to our hearts, it makes this word by word understanding, which is okay, but if we do not have the inner, it will make no sense whatsoever to us. Although from the outside point of view, from every imaginable test, it would look like we have the knowledge. And I think this is a nutshell. The modern educational system looks for repeatability. You repeat the same thing and then they think there is some understanding. Logic has different layers. One is attunement, and one is without attunement, and they look exactly the same. There's not one semicolon, nothing. It's not even an arrow or parenthesis. It is exactly the same, but the understanding in one case has nothingness, it is slower, it is not only attuned, but it is tuned in, in Stimmung. This is actually very close to the one thing I read in lecture 1326 about Terry, the fractal theorists, shows that in the same Reality understanding could be different, but it can also have different qualities. There is a quality, a fishtir to the understanding. And we are all aware of that, but maybe we cannot speak about it. Kelly, you had a question there? Uh, there was a new name in this paper that was Cavell. Uh, I looked him up. Yes, please do. I, I was just thinking of asking you to do that. So, so, so it's Stanley Cavell, uh, he's from um, Boston, he died in 2018, he was mm. an American philosopher. It could be interesting if we can pick yes, him up. Yes, uh, I was just thinking that. Please send me a link, I think that's a good idea.
Mm. And uh, can I can I say something yet? So I was thinking about this. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is a small speech about not in a and being, and I thought that it could be helpful to compare with the young and young, you know, young symbol. Um, uh, where nothing is, for instance, uh, the other part of the yin yang symbol, uh, and we have also the rabbit, uh, duck and rabbit, and there we can also think about the yin yang in one way. Yeah, that is, like, yeah, 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 and the neck if you. I mean, like, uh, for instance, uh, since yang is uh, white normally, we can think about the, as a rabbit, um, and yin and dark and negative could be the duck. <laughs> or something like that, yeah, but, yeah. but it's yeah. not only part of so-called passive reality. It's no. not down, or but we are we have to ourselves be attuned to yes. understand it. That's his point. There, it's mm. you can read through the word, you can know all books, you can know all of uh, Zion und Zeit. Still, there could be zero understanding, mm. nothing. Mm. You so you need a shock, like in quantum physics, you need a uh, you need attunement. Attunement, yes. Yeah, and mm -hmm. attunement is the same as slowness. And I would say uh, in Heidegger's time, slowness was more common than it is today. But a hundred years before that, it was even more common. But today we don't have slowness. This needs to be understood slowly. It needs to be embodied, so to speak, to say a menor pontitur. But as he showed with logic, logic can say different things. So there's no criticism of logic, mm. which is that very interesting point uh, uh, Witherspoon is making, and he, he did that successful. It was very helpful, and I really do hope this was helpful for you too. Thank you very much, and have a very pleasant night. Thank you.